So, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're continuing the adventure, The General's Son. Huge shout out to the amazing author. Check out their details in the description below if you want to follow along. In this session, we'll be exploring chapters 5 to 6. Don't forget to smash that like button and drop a comment. Your engagement helps us out with the algorithm and means the world to us. Alright, let's jump into the story. Taking slow and even breaths, Naruto was sitting cross-legged at the edge of the Emerald Forest. However, within his hands were both his weapons Helios and Selene, but Naruto wasn't actually holding either weapon. In fact, Naruto's palms were pointed to the ground and his fingers were completely stretched outward. Despite this, it didn't stop Naruto's two weapons from defying gravity and sticking tightly onto his hands. Naruto himself didn't fully understand the reasoning behind this, but he knew this was somehow correlated to his semblance. A discovery Naruto had found when he began to meditate to train his semblance more, as he often found his body sticking onto the ground like some sort of adhesive. This, of course, made the curious scientist test a few theories about what he was experiencing. It first started with Naruto, trying to stick his hands and feet to the ground to see if he could control which parts of his body would stick onto surfaces. Finding he could control that variable, Naruto began to take small objects like pebbles and leaves, while using them as objects to better grasp the control of his sticking capabilities. Of course, he had managed to grasp a mastery over that, and work his way up to bigger objects like his weapons. However, Naruto found this training a little harder than the pebbles and leaves. Despite this, Naruto was starting to get a grasp over larger objects, which was the last hurdle before Naruto's next step of training. That, of course, being the use of this newfound ability to stick onto vertical surfaces like walls and trees. An ability that in theory should work, as Naruto not only had the ability to control what parts of his body would stick onto objects, but he also had the physical prowess to hold his body in a vertical position. And that makes 10 minutes. Naruto mumbled to himself with a small grin of satisfaction, while taking a tight hold onto his weapons. I think tomorrow, I will finally start trying to stick myself onto trees and walls. Beaming with anticipation, Naruto was extremely excited to take his next steps in his personal training. Yet, he still knew this ability he was training wasn't what he had used when he lost control of himself back at Atlas. This, of course, made Naruto theorize there were even more possibilities and potential with his strange power within himself. Though this didn't deter Naruto, but instead sparked a new drive he hadn't felt in quite some time. Considering now more than ever, Naruto wanted to push his boundaries and get stronger than he ever was before. Let's see here. Naruto began softly, as he placed Helios and Selene at his hip and reached into his pocket. Then by producing a small, old and worn-out notebook, Naruto began to write down a few notes. A habit he had developed over the years from working with Dr. Polandina. Check off the combined weight and size of Helios and Selene as objects I can stick onto my body. Then tomorrow I can work on theory number 7 and try to walk and stand on vertical surfaces. After that, I'll try hanging upside down off horizontal surfaces, and from there, I'll focus on a few other theories I have. Naruto tucked his notebook away with a smile, as he was proud of the progress he was making on his own. Though he often wondered if he could be doing better, which was thoughts that mostly stemmed from the fact that Naruto trained alone. Something he knew wasn't optimal, as it was always best to have another mind to give a second opinion or a different perspective. Hell, this was even more true because Naruto wouldn't even be this far along if Amber didn't help him with meditation. Yet over the past months, Amber had remained her usual distant self and didn't really make an effort to communicate or help Naruto often. However, there were a few occasions Amber did seek Naruto out, but all those instances were like their first encounter and were sparked by Amber needing Naruto for something. This of course made Naruto start to believe his teammate only sought him out when she needed him and simply helped him to ensure neither party owed one another. Still, their encounters were not as cut and dry as that since at times it felt like Amber was randomly making up excuses or reasons she needed Naruto. Almost as if she wanted to help him, but used the excuse of returning a favor for a favor to master true intentions. For Naruto, figuring this out was frustrating, as he found there were multiple layers to the girl he didn't understand and she wasn't the sharing type. Regardless, Naruto was at least grateful that he and Amber got along moderately well, which was something he couldn't say about Roman. Ever since the two butted heads and Naruto pressured the teen with his authority, there had been a tension between the two that was obvious for everyone involved. It was an issue that Naruto desperately wanted to fix, as it really pressed a wedge in their team's already abysmal synergy. However, every opportunity Naruto took in order to fix the issue failed miserably, leaving Naruto to wonder if his team would ever become a well-rounded unit like Clover's team back in Atlas. Unfortunately, with a mysterious girl who keeps to herself and a selfish asshole for teammates, Naruto knew achieving the same level of teamwork as the Aesops was near impossible especially with Naruto's lack of experience as a team leader. Though at least Naruto's third teammate Gretchen wasn't an issue for him, mainly due to the girl's friendly nature and personality blending well with Naruto's. 
A positive that left some spark of hope for the young group of warriors. I should probably head back to the dorms. Naruto began softly as he turned towards the direction of the academy. Today is an off day from classes. So maybe I can try to get some team bonding done. Grabbing his scroll and flipping through his contacts, Naruto quickly found Gretchen's name and pressed the call button. Hey leader, what's up? The larger than life woman asked instantly, making Naruto smile at how fast she answered. Well, I was finishing my daily training and thought today would be a good day for some team bonding. So why don't you find Roman and Amber, then the four of us can go explore Vale a little. Sounds like a good time to me. I'll grab them and meet you at the dorms. Naruto smiled. All right, I'll see you there, Gretchen. City of Vale. Moving together in a loosely formed group, Naruto and his team walked around a rather large city with different expressions. Amber seemed like she didn't want to be anywhere near the city, while Roman looked completely bored. Gretchen, on the other hand, was a simple country girl and had never really experienced the big city before. So she, like Naruto, who wanted to see what Vale was like, was clearly impressed. So why exactly are we walking around this cesspool? Roman asked, which earned a snort from Amber. I don't know why you're so upset. Shouldn't you feel right at home here? Amber began softly while folding her arms. Though I can't say that I exactly want to be here either. Naruto looked over his shoulder with a frown. It's team bonding. It wouldn't kill you two to spend some time with each other. Gretchen leaned into Naruto with a snicker and whispered into his ear. Well, they may kill each other. What was that, brute? Roman yelled in frustration while Naruto sighed. Guys, can we just spend time together for one hour without fighting or arguing? Naruto asked with exhaustion behind his words. Amber lifted her brow. One hour of complacency and then we can leave? Bringing his hand to his face, Naruto sighed and simply nodded. Sure, one hour of actual team bonding and then you can go about your own way. Well, let's get this over with then. Roman began as he walked forward while Amber merely followed closely behind. Naruto lowered his shoulders and asked himself if this was even worth it. Yet as Gretchen rested a hand on his shoulder, the blonde looked to the grinning girl. Don't let them get you down, Naruto. I for one am glad you are trying to bring us together as a real team. Thanks, Gretchen. That means a lot. Nodding with a friendly smile, Gretchen walked after their teammates with Naruto following her side. The group didn't have a real destination and were just walking aimlessly around the city while absorbing all the sights and sound around them. Something that caused Naruto to almost zone out and focus on everything happening around him. Man, I'm going to be late for work. Hey, are you excited for this year's vital festival? Excuse me, what's the quickest way to Canyon Boulevard? Hey, did you see that little girl earlier? Yes. She looked awful. Her parents should be ashamed. Best hot dogs in all of Vale right here. Taxi. Taxi. Hey, let's go check out that new shoe store downtown. Whoa, look at her, dude. Faunus are equal, not less. Faunus are equal, not less. Faunus are equal, not less. Hearing what sounded like loud chanting from a large crowd. Naruto suddenly tuned closely into the noise and started to walk in the direction of the chanting. His team seeing this had rather mixed emotions. Just what is the Ice King doing? Does he not know what's going on that way? Roman asked while he followed Naruto. Only 49 more minutes. Amber added in as she walked after Naruto. Gretchen followed in the rear and rounded a street corner with her team. Where to the girl's surprise a cluster of faunus were gathered with signs in hand as they shouted at the top of their lungs. Just what is going on here? Gretchen asked softly, as she had never such a thing before. Roman folded his arms and kept a rather neutral expression. It's a faunus rights rally. You would think having equal rights would be a no-brainer, but that's not the world we live in. However, we should keep moving. These sort of things always end up hostile, in one form or another. But can't we help them? Gretchen asked, as she leaned into the group with her hands held out. Amber frowned and shook her head. It's quite sad, really, but there is nothing we can do. We are just simple students with no real power or influence. Gretchen tightly gripped her fists together. There has to be something. Naruto heard the conversation between his team, but instead of participating or speaking, his mind kept his eyes on the protesters. They seemed like somewhat of an organized group, and to Naruto's surprise, there were even small children within their ranks, showing how important these issues were to the younger generation of Faunus. Yet as he watched the group, he knew Roman's earlier warning held a solid amount of truth. However, this wasn't attributed to the protesters, but rather a group of rather hostile humans forming in direct opposition. This could get ugly. Naruto began as he glanced around to see if any of the city's law enforcement was around to stop a potential scuffle. Yet Naruto couldn't see any near or around either group. I've seen this happen a few times back home in Atlas. Like I said, we should walk off. Roman urged while he started to walk away. The last thing we want to do is get involved. Gretchen was about to voice her opinion on the matter, but a sudden voice caused her to freeze. 
Piss off you stupid monsters. Go back to whatever cave you crawled out of. We don't want you here. Gretchen was horrified as she watched the humans begin to grab rocks and bricks from the ground before throwing them into the crowd of protesting faunus. Roman merely lowered his head and looked away, as though he could hear the insults from the humans and cries of fear from the faunus he didn't want involved. Amber herself tightened her fists in anger as she saw the protesters were not fighting back. Instead, they simply shielded the young and weak while trying to endure the abuse directed their way. However, as a single brick went sailing between the two groups, time seemed to slowly come to a halt. This was because everyone saw the target that the brick was aiming for. That, of course, being the small girl with black hair and cat ears, who was still boldly shouting out her cause without fear and trying her hardest to hold her sign high. Yet, as the brick came mere inches from her face, she paused in fear and flinched to brace herself for the pain. A pain that, oddly enough, never came. Instead, as she opened her eyes, she saw the brick had been caught by a tall, blonde teenager with two guns at his hip. A teenager who was, of course, one very furious Naruto Ironwood. You're not hurt, are you? Naruto asked in a soft and caring voice, which caught both groups off guard. In fact, the scene had completely froze from Naruto's sudden intervention. No. The girl replied softly, which made Naruto nod without looking at her. Good. The teenager began before crushing the brick within his hand, stunning everyone who watched him open his hand to allow the crushed dust to flutter into the wind. Now to deal with the actual monsters. The crowd of humans stepped back in fear at Naruto's piercing gaze as they were all shocked the moment the boy grabbed one of his weapons. Then, without wasting a second, the pistol snapped and shifted into his sword. Please, young man, don't resort to violence. A large faunus with black hair called out desperately. The white fan despite a few outliers as a peaceful group. We don't condone violent acts. Naruto looked over his shoulder, seeing dozens of faunus protesters bleeding from multiple injuries caused by the humans. A sight that made his grip tighten in frustration. I just don't get you bastards. The general's son began as he turned his vision back to the humans. You repress and hate these people behind me, because they look different. Yet on the inside, Naruto twirled his blade around and stabbed his own hand and then by extending his now bleeding hand outward. He clenched his fist and allowed the blood to leak from his hand and trickle onto the ground. We all bleed the same blood. The two groups were both stunned for completely different reasons. One out of sheer shock for what Naruto had done, while the other looked to the blonde with respect and admiration. Gretchen, of course, was smiling wide and more proud to call Naruto her leader more than ever. Even Roman, who wouldn't ever do what Naruto had done, approved of his intentions. Yet out of Naruto's entire team, it was Amber who found herself not only the most impressed, but also inspired by the boy's words and actions. However, if anyone wants to step forward and challenge my claim, I will be more than happy to show you what your insides look like. Naruto declared in a firm voice as he rested his blade by his hip, and a crowd of humans all stepped back in fear the moment Naruto's eyes flashed red. Oh, no volunteers. Then get lost. The crowd all quickly jumped away and began to run off in different directions, a reaction that made Naruto snort. Though as a firm hand rested itself onto his shoulder, Naruto found the large black-haired faunus from earlier looking at him with a beaming smile. On behalf of the white fang, I would like to thank you, but the man paused and looked to the small girl by his side. As a father, I can't repay you enough for what you've done. Naruto smiled and waved the large faunus off. It's nothing. I'm just glad I could jump in time to save her. The faunus laughed and shook his head. While I'm grateful for that, it's not what I meant. He began softly, while softly rubbing the top of the girl's messy black hair. Naruto lifted his brow. Then if you don't mind me asking, what exactly did I do? You show my daughter that not all humans harbor hatred for our kind. It's a powerful lesson that can spark hope for our cause and future generation. The faunus then turned his full gaze to his daughter. So tell me, stranger, what's your name? Naruto extended his hand out. Naruto Ironwood. His ears slightly twitching at the name, the faunus accepted Naruto's hand all the same. Gyra Belladonna, leader of the White Fang, and this is my daughter, Blake. The large faunus then nudged Blake forward. Please thank this man, sweetie. Blake lowered her head. Thank you. Naruto bent down to be eye level with the faunus he had saved, while a warm smile graced his lips. There is no need to thank me. I'm glad I could help, but I want you to promise me something. Promise you. Blake asked softly, confused by her savior's words. Naruto smiled and reached out and lifted the sign in Blake's hands up. Always hold your cause up high and never let your voice be silenced. You're the future for Remnant, and you can't let beliefs of others belittle what you're fighting for. Promise me that you will fight until real change happens. Blake nodded with a steadfast resolve. I promise. Laughing and ruffling the girl's hair, Naruto stood up and gave an infectious wide grin. Yet before he could say anything more, he felt someone grip onto the hand he had stabbed. 
Then, with a decent amount of force, Naruto's hand was pulled up close to the personal space of Amber. Really? Did you have to go this far? The girl asked with clear frustration behind her voice. While to Naruto's surprise, she was wrapping his wound with a piece of torn fabric. Stabbing yourself was completely idiotic. Studying his teammate as she worked, Naruto was at a complete loss for words. Since for the first time ever, Naruto saw a look of concern on Amber's face, which was clearly reflected by her current actions. Making Naruto almost swear something had gotten to the girl to make her act in such a way. Yet at the same time seeing this made the blonde happy, as it showed they were growing closer. Well, you know, my old man always said, if you're going to send a message, make it a damn memorable one. Amber sighed and finished covering Naruto's injury. If you say so, but I have to at least give you credit. You impressed me. Gretchen suddenly appeared by Naruto's side and slung an arm around the boy's neck. Yeah, I'm with Amber. That was one of the most badass things I've ever seen. I'm just jealous I didn't get to join in. While I don't particularly agree with poking your way into matters that don't concern oneself. Even I can say what you did was at least respectable. Roman added in. Naruto grinned as his team gathered around him, while thinking maybe he was finally starting to win them over just a little bit. Five blocks away. Running and weaving through the crowds and obstacles avail. A single girl ran with every ounce of strength that her little weak body possessed. Her hair a mismatched color of both pink and brown fluttered behind her, while making her an easy target for those running after her to spot. Get back here, you friggin' brat. Gritting her teeth and tears running down her face, she wanted to scream. She wanted to call for help, but unfortunately, she couldn't. Yet even if she could cry for help, who would come? She had spent months running and begging for help. However, those she reached out for couldn't understand her and those that could didn't want anything to do with a small and dirty child like herself. She was alone and she knew that, but regardless, she didn't want to die. She wanted to survive. An ambition that made her ignore the splitting pain in her thighs and the shortness of her breath. Because if she truly wanted to live to see a better day, she couldn't give up now. She had to keep running while hoping. No praying someone would finally hear her silent cries. Atlas. Sitting with a heavy air of silence that could nearly suffocate someone. Winter sat with her legs crossed and arms folded. Meanwhile, practically mirroring the young girl's posture, with her mother, the latter of whom was sipping on a cup of hot tea across the opposite side of their table. Winter herself moved her eyes off her mother and gazed around their family's private outdoor garden, an area that Winter knew her mother liked to frequent with her day drinking. Yet oddly enough, not only did Willow request her daughter to meet her here, but she was not intoxicated. Instead, the woman seemed more sharp and calculated than usual, something that Winter hasn't seen from the woman since she was a small child. You should drink your tea, Winter. Klein made a rather wonderful batch. Winter narrowed her eyes to the cup laying before her, while thinking the warm liquid would help warm her in the rather cold weather. However, despite reaching out to take a drink, Winter instead looked at her mother. Why did you call me here, mother? Willow scoffed and took a sip from her cup. Is there something wrong with me wanting to see my eldest? Do you want my honest answer? Please don't be crass. It's one of your more undesirable traits. Winter lifted her brow. Better crass than an alcoholic. Speaking of which mother dearest, why aren't you three bottles of whiskey deep yet? Willow closed her eyes and sighed. Your father left yesterday for a three-day trip for the company. You should know I'm always in better spirits when he is gone. Finally reaching for her tea, Winter took a small sip and closed her eyes. So it would seem. Yes, but please tell me how you're doing. Fine as always, mother. I'm currently ranked top in my class within the academy and General Ironwood has shown great interest with me and my team. That's not what I meant, child. How are you? Are you happy? Are you eating enough? Have you made any new friends? Slightly caught off guard, Winter sheepishly looked off to the side. I'm quite happy and I am eating plenty. That's wonderful to hear, but you didn't mention any new friends. Please tell me you're not still driving people away with your rather childish behavior. Winter's eye twitched at her mother's question. No mother, I have not made any new friends and it has nothing to do with my personality. I'm just not in the mood to get myself distracted with needless attachments. Willow sighed and closed her eyes. Now that doesn't sound like you at all. In fact, you're starting to sound like your father. That couldn't be related to Naruto Ironwood attending a different academy, would it? Winter snapped her eyes to her mother, the latter of whom simply let out a light-hearted laugh. Who told you about Naruto? I haven't talked to you about him in months. Willow slightly opened her eyes and sipped her tea. So, he is the problem, but if you must know, Weiss told me a great deal. Though she really didn't have to do so, as you two were always inseparable. So even I could notice his obvious absence by your side. However, that's besides the point. You're clearly having issues with a boy, and as your mother, I will do everything I can to help you. Thanks, I would love help from the woman with a model marriage. There you go being crass again, darling, but you do make a good point. 
Your father isn't a great husband and our marriage reflects that. Then why do you stay with him? Because I love him. Winter didn't reply, as her mother's words were sharp and came without any hesitation. Though the girl did see a slight crack in the woman's expression. It may sound foolish, but I truly love your father. However, over the years I've slowly learned his initial love for me was just a simple facade to worm his way into the Schnee family. I was nothing more than a means to an end. Mom don't talk like that. Winter began softly, as she could hear the hurt behind Willow's words. I'm sure dad does love you. You know how he is, he's not the affection type. Willow cut in with a soft chuckle. Please don't lie for his sake. We both know how he truly is. Winter simply hung her head. He's a bastard. Willow nodded in agreement. Yes, he is, but all the same, he's someone who captured my heart. Yet over the years, he's merely tossed me to the side while I've tried dozens of times to win him back over. Telling myself day after day that he does love me, but knowing deep down how he has always felt. Mom, you know, I've always been quite jealous of you and little Naruto. Huh? Why would you be jealous of me and that imbecile? You two have something that your father and I never had. That, of course, being true and unconditional love. Winter turned bright red, which of course caused Willow to laugh. Me and that imbecile are not in love. I can't stand the sight of him. Oh, Winter, you're an abysmal liar. You two have always been attached at the hip since you first met, but your relationship goes even deeper than that. I should know I've watched you two over the years and neither you or Naruto treat anyone else like you do each other. Yeah, we fight, argue, and can't agree on anything. If anything, we have the most hate-filled relationship in all of Atlas. Yet behind closed doors, when you think no one is watching, you have tender moments that show how much you mean to each other. It's the small things like picking each other up after a bad day or surprising the other with a small treat. Even the small laughs you share together when you think you're alone is enough to prove my point. Winter bit her lip. Okay, maybe you're right, but that doesn't mean we are in love. Willow simply shook her head. You can stop trying to lie in front of me, darling. I know how much that boy means to you, and I approve of him ten times over. After all, he treats you the way I wished your father would treat me. So, tell me what's going on with you and Naruto. Sighing in defeat and lowering her head, Winter subconsciously rubbed her hands together. Before Naruto left for Beacon, he told me that he planned going there for a long time before telling me. And that upset you? It did and we fought and left on bad terms, but things only got worse from there. See me and Naruto got caught up in an incident, and as a result I got my injuries. Naruto blamed himself and wouldn't speak to me for weeks. I eventually caught on to the fact that he was avoiding me, so out of spite, I completely shut him out. So, the last time you two spoke was months ago? No, Naruto has called me dozens of times from Beacon, but I also ignore him. I usually answer, give him a look, and hang up after a minute or so. A winter that's not making anything better. I know that, but I want him to see how I felt. He not only left me, but he completely ignored me. I want him to realize how much hurt he put me through. I understand that completely, darling, but you must realize this. Yes, you're giving Naruto a taste of his own medicine, but you're hurting yourself by doing this. Instead of fixing the issue between you and Naruto, you're only causing more damage, which affects the both of you greatly. So, I should forget and forgive? Yes and no. You can forgive Naruto, and you can even apologize to him, as relationships need effort from both sides. However, the most important thing is honesty. Tell him about how you feel, and that should make him understand your actions better. It may even draw you two brats closer together. Winter took a moment to think her mother's words over. So, I should call him? Well, either that or speak to him in person, as issues of the heart are better dealt with face to face. I see. In that case, during the vital festival this year, I'll fix this. Willow smiled softly. That's a good plan, and it's only three weeks away. Let's just hope Naruto doesn't find a new girl to love. Huh? With Naruto. Walking with his mind reflecting on his previous encounter, Naruto was essentially leading his team on autopilot and wasn't paying attention to his surroundings. However, as he turned down a corner and walked down the sidewalk, Naruto had enough awareness to feel Roman's hand tightly grab his shoulder. Something up? The blonde asked, as he glanced over his shoulder to the orange-haired delinquent, who to Naruto's observation seemed slightly on edge, which wasn't in character for the normally cocky teenager. Gretchen and Amber both stopping along with their leader looked at Roman, as like Naruto they could tell the boy seemed off. Wrong turn ice king. Roman began softly, his eyes already combing their surroundings, moving his eyes off Roman and taking a moment to observe his environment. Naruto could instantly tell they were slowly approaching the more rough and sketchy part of the city, an observation that made Naruto look back to his teammates with a curious expression. Bad part of town? To put it nicely, Roman replied quickly while he tried to motion for his team to turn around. Trust me, it's better off if we end this little tour now. 
Gretchen folded her arms with a frown. It's just a few blocks. How bad could it be? Amber huffed and rolled her eyes. He is probably afraid of running into someone he's crossed. Roman made a sarcastic laugh and flipped the girl off. For your information, sweetheart, we are a group consisting of one country bumpkin, an atlas prude, a semi-attractive girl, and a devilish handsome rouge. We make for quite the easy mark in a place like this, so I'm just trying to avoid any more conflicts. That makes some sense, actually. Gretchen began before looking to Amber with slight shock. But Amber, I didn't know you grew up in the country, too. Amber sighed and looked at the large woman with an annoyed look. I didn't. He was calling you the country bumpkin. Why you? Gretchen began, but was stopped by Naruto, taking a deep sigh. Just drop it and all of you need to relax. Just because I'm from Atlas doesn't mean I've never been in a rough neighborhood before. In fact, this place is a lot like Mantle back home. So we should be fine. Saying nothing more on the matter, Naruto started to walk forward, while Gretchen smiled and followed the blonde. Amber merely shrugged her shoulders and walked as well, while Roman groaned in annoyance and slowly lagged behind the group. Yet, as the group turned down a corner, Naruto suddenly had the wind taken from him. This was because a small child rammed her head straight into his stomach. However, Naruto was strong enough to shake the blow off and take his attention to the small girl, who unlike Naruto was clearly dazed by the impact. Hey, are you okay? Naruto asked softly, while bending down to meet the girl at eye level. Then as Naruto's cerulean eyes gazed into the frightened mismatched pair, Naruto could see the tears streaming down her face. Tears that were slowly smudging the dirt and grime on her cheeks. In fact, as the girl remained silent, Naruto could see her clothes were in tatters, her hair was a mess and she had an absolute putrid smell to her. Despite all of this, she didn't make a single sound, but instead began to look around in a frantic panic. Something that Naruto instantly picked up on. What's wrong? Why are you in such a hurry? Naruto asked as he placed a hand on the girl's shoulder. Can I help you? The girl turning to Naruto with a look of desperation mixed with frustration swiped her hands through the air and made a few quick signals. It doesn't matter. No one understands me. His eyes growing wide in interest, Naruto softly signed back to the girl with ease. Idokropa. Her eyes nearly popping open in disbelief at the blonde's actions, she instantly replied back. Please help me. Naruto smiled. I will be happy to, but first what's your name? Minas Naruto Ironwood. Now, that's a lovely name. Now tell me, Neo, how can I help you? They won't stop chasing me. They killed Mama and Papa. Naruto hardened up at this revelation, as this girl was clearly afraid and running from dangerous people. Yet Naruto's team, being the onlookers to the situation, finally decided to voice themselves. Okay, what is going on here? Roman finally asked in annoyance. And since when do you speak sign language? Ember added in. Turning to his team, Naruto kept himself close to Neo to support the scared girl. This is Neo, she is running from some very nasty people, and we are going to help her. Oh, four. As for knowing sign language, Naruto cut in as he stopped Roman from swearing in front of Neo. Winter insisted I take a few classes to learn how to sign back in combat school. She always said it would be a useful skill to have. I'll never let her know it, but she was right. Who is Winter? Amber asked softly, while Naruto waved her off. That's not important right now. Right now we need to. There you are, you little shit. An aggressive voice yelled out, which caused Naruto to snap his eyes to the side, finding two individuals running right at him with their sights placed completely on Neo, the latter of whom was completely trembling at the man and woman who had been chasing her for so long. Neo, are these the bad people you told me about? Naruto asked softly, while his anger started to build slowly the moment the girl nodded in confirmation. You really thought you could escape us forever, brat? The woman asked in a frustrated voice, while she and her partner stopped a few feet away from the group. This, of course, caused Roman to see the spider tattoos on their bodies, making the teenager realize just what type of people they were up against. Ice King, we need to get. Roman began, but froze the moment he saw Naruto's eyes flash red. Standing to his feet and not even bothering to draw his weapons, Naruto merely glared at the two individuals before him. These monsters were chasing a girl who was malnourished, tattered and afraid. A girl whose parents these two most likely killed. I don't know who you are or what you're after, but if you want to harm a hair on this girl's head, well then you'll have to kill me first. The man chuckled and drew a small knife. That can be arranged quite. The man paused as Naruto blurred forward at speeds no one could follow, while his fist was already a mere inch from the man's face. Then what followed next was an impact that not only completely shattered the man's aura, but sent him rolling backwards like a rag doll down the street he came from. What? The woman screamed in disbelief, while Naruto didn't even skip a beat and spun around and kicked her hard in the stomach. A blow that broke her aura as well and sent her rag dolling much high and farther than her male companion. 
Naruto, watching both individuals land and remain down, looked to his hands, having to admit that he even surprised himself with that burst of speed and power, wondering if the personal training he was doing was having such a drastic impact on his strength. Regardless, Naruto shook those thoughts off and turned back to Neo. Then, with care behind his bright blue eyes, he kneeled before the girl and smiled. There is no need to worry, Neo. I'll keep you safe. Neo's lip quivering at what the blonde had said and done for her immediately barreled into Naruto for a strong hug, an action that made Naruto laugh softly and return the girl's embrace. Yet this small moment was short-lived due to Roman making his opinion known. Do you have any clue who you just attacked? Glancing at his teammate with a blank look, Naruto didn't even bat an eye. Scum. Cute response, but you don't understand what you just got in the middle of. The teenager replied in a frantic tone as he started to pace and massage his face. Ember lifted her brow. But you obviously do. So care to explain what's got you so worked up? The spider tattoos on those two mean they are members of Lil Miss Malachite's gang. Oh. Ember added in a moment of realization. Who? Naruto asked in response, which made Roman groan and throw his hands into the air. Of course the Atlas boy is clueless. Hey, I've never heard of this person either. Gretchen began, as she voiced herself. Yeah, so why don't you enlighten us, Roman? Okay, fine, Lil Miss Malachite is the biggest crime boss in both Vale and Mistral. I mean, seriously, Ice King, this woman has her claws in almost every aspect of both kingdoms. She's a terrifying woman who you've now crossed. Well, I'm not intimidated by some person I've never met, but more importantly, Neil, why were these people after you? I don't know. I see. Do you have anyone who I can take you to? Neo sadly shook her head. All I had was mommy and daddy. Naruto nodded and closed his eyes, while his mind ran through his options. Roman, what's the odds of Vale's police force being corrupted by this Malachite lady? Absolutely 100%, but it's not like those idiots are helpful anyway. Why? Taking a deep sigh, Naruto grabbed a handful of lean and handed it to Gretchen. I want you and Roman to pick up a few different outfits that would fit Neo. She shouldn't have to stay in those nasty clothes. Can you do that for me? Gretchen nodded. Absolutely. Roman lifted his brow. As Naruto didn't answer his question, and he was suddenly giving orders. Ice King, what are you doing? Naruto stood by Neo and smiled, while his hand rested on the girl's messy hair. Neo has nowhere safe to go if the police are corrupted by some gang, but Beacon operates outside the jurisdiction of Vale. So we can protect Neo until we have a more permanent solution. You have to be kidding me. We can't just start a fight with the biggest gang and remnant like it's nothing. Roman screamed as he looked up to the sky in disbelief. And what if Ashbin isn't for us keeping Neo around? Have you thought about that? I'm sure Oz won't have an issue with us keeping Neo for a while. However, if he does, my father is the most powerful man in Atlas. One quick call from him will be all we would need. Amber stayed rather silent through this exchange, but she knew right away Ashbin wouldn't mind helping Neo. That's a great idea, Naruto, but while we get clothes, what will you, Amber and Neo do? Gretchen asked. We will clean Neo up and get some food in her stomach. After that, I'll talk to Ashbin and explain the situation and come up with some sort of plan. Is that okay with you, Neo? Her eyes wide in disbelief and tears slowly leaking out. Neo merely nodded her head, a response that all four teenagers could understand. Well, that settles that. Naruto laughed loudly while he hoisted Neo up onto his shoulders. Let's get going. Team NGRA's dorm. Smiling softly and running a large brush he had borrowed from Amber, Naruto carefully combed through Neo's long, wet, and messy locks. Amber watching from the side simply observed the two with a small amount of disbelief, as her team leader was actually quite good at the task. Though she also had to fight back a frown, as while Naruto worked on Neo's hair, she was busy stuffing her face with any bit of food the two were able to get for her, showing how deprived and starved the girl truly was. But she took solace knowing she and Naruto were able to get Neo clean and fed. They even managed to find some temporary clean clothes for the girl. Sure, they were Amber's oversized shorts and shirt, but they were at least better than what she had. You know, Naruto, you're strangely good at brushing hair. Amber teased softly, which made her leader snicker. Yeah, Winter used to make me brush her hair sometimes, so I got rather good at it. Naruto admitted with an honest chuckle. It was either get good at brushing hair or get insulted for doing a poor job. Actually, come to think of it, she insulted me no matter how good I did. Neo lifted up her tiny hands and smiled. I think you're doing great. Ha, huh, thanks, Neo. Smiling at the two having their moment. Amber took a seat on a bed adjacent to Naruto and Neo. So this is the second time today I've heard you mention this winter person. Is she your girlfriend or something? Turning red at the question, Naruto quickly looked at Amber. No, it's nothing like that. Finding some slight amusement in Naruto's reaction, Amber folded her arms and gave Naruto a smug face. Oh, is that so? You're blushing really hard there, leader. I am not. 
Listen, me and Winter have just been friends for a really long time. There is nothing else going on with us, okay? Hmm, I'm not buying into that one bit. What about you, Neo? Smiling with a mouthful of food, Neo slashed her hands through the air. I think Naruto is in love. I am not in love with her. Naruto yelled in his defense, which made Amber chuckle. Thanks for translating for me, leader, but there is no need to be shy. You can tell me and Neo the truth. I don't talk to the others and Neo can't talk to the others. So all your secrets are safe. Closing his eyes in annoyance, Naruto swore no matter what kingdom he was in, he couldn't avoid being teased about Winter. Yet at the same time, he didn't hate talking about Winter, as Naruto really missed his best friend more than anything. However, Naruto also didn't want to give Amber any ammunition to use against him. Especially when he knew absolutely nothing about the girl before him. You want to talk about sharing secrets. The only thing I know about you is your name. Naruto cut in as he opened his eyes and looked directly at Amber. That's fair. Amber replied in a matter-of-fact tone while crossing her arms. How about if you answer my question, I'll answer whatever you want to know. Sound fair? Surprised by this outcome, Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Sure, why not? All right, so let's start simple. What does winter mean to you? Besides my father, she's the single most important person in my life. So you love her? I thought we only get one question each. Amber giggled. My game, my rules. His eyes twitching, Naruto slightly sucked his teeth, but decided to play along regardless. I mean, we have been best friends since we were five, so I guess I do love her, but I've never really processed what that love means. Care to elaborate for me? Well, I love my dad because he is my family and we have that bond. But there are also other people I love like Dr. Polandina or even Uncle Clover. Yet the feelings I have with Winter just don't feel the same like they do with everyone else. That's probably because you love her romantically. Seriously, are you that dense? Naruto opened his mouth to argue, but he paused and took a moment to think to himself. Recalling his memories with Winter and thinking of all the fond moments he had shared with the girl. Asking himself for the first time if he really did have feelings for Winter. Yet Naruto didn't stop there as he began to even process the way he felt when he was both with Winter and when he was away from her. Coming to a quick conclusion that he loved being near Winter, hated being away from her. However, as his chest began to beat faster, Naruto began to think even more about his closest friend, realizing how much he missed her voice, her laugh, and especially her smile. Hell, Naruto even missed having her around to insult him over every little thing he did, making Naruto come to a long and overdue realization. Oh no, I'm in love with my best friend. Amber laughed and held her hands out. See, isn't it good to let the truth out? Naruto sighed and closed his eyes. Not as much as you would think, but now it's my turn to ask you something. Okay, fine, what's your question? Well, ah. Uh. Naruto began as he furrowed his brow and tapped his forehead, finding it harder to ask the girl a question when he had no real place to start from. I don't really know what to ask. I mean, I don't know that much about you. So how about you tell me about your life before coming to Beacon? Well, that's not much of a pleasant tale to share. Amber replied softly, while she slightly shifted her body and looked off to the side. I won't pry then. Amber quickly shook her head. No, it's fine. My story is actually quite similar to little Neos here. Neos here slightly perked up, while Naruto himself looked to Amber with a downward expression. Since he was able to piece together a bit about Amber already. You lost your parents as well? Nodding her head, Amber gave Neo a sympathetic smile. My parents were killed when I was around the same age as Neo, but I was far more fortunate since I was saved by Professor Ajbin and a few of his huntsmen. From that day on, Ajbin has watched over me and insisted I join his school to keep me safe. I see. That explains a few things I've noticed, since you seem to be more familiar with Ajbin than most students. You're a pretty sharp leader, but yes, I have a decent connection with Ajbin that should work in our favor. After all, I can convince him to help us with Neo with ease. Naruto smiled. That would make things easier. Yup. Amber began as her eyes drifted to Neo. Noticing the girl had finally finished eating. In fact, why don't we go talk to him now? Yeah, we should let Ashpin in on everything going on. Naruto replied in a casual voice, while standing on his feet and looking at Neo. Ready to go. Simply nodding her head, Neo quickly took a place at Naruto's side, while Amber lagged behind. From there, the trio took a short walk across Beacon's campus and made their way towards Professor Ashpin's office. Then by taking a small elevator, the two teenagers and small child found themselves standing at the entrance to their headmaster's office where Ashpin was seated alone at his desk, while a rather curious expression overtook his face. Amber and Mr. Ironwood, this is a rather sudden surprise. The man began in a slow yet tactful voice, while his eyes dialed in on the girl hiding behind Naruto's leg. And who is your little friend? Nudging Neo forward with a grin, Naruto walked further into the office with the girl. This is Neo. we found her while my team was exploring Vale. 
Ashbin nodded with a friendly smile. It's a pleasure, I'm Professor Ashbin. Neo nodded and shyly signed towards the man. Nice to meet you. Lifting his brow with even more interest, Ashbin moved his hands through the air. And what brings you to my office, Neo? Neo was stunned by the man's actions, while Naruto was impressed. Amber, on the other hand, could only think that, of course, the man would have learned sign language over his many years. However, despite the three's reactions, Naruto cleared his throat and stepped forward. Neo's parents were killed by a very powerful criminal organization for reasons that Neo doesn't know. She had been running for months with no proper food or shelter until my team found her today. We saved her from the goons chasing her and brought her here for food and safety. Ashbin folded his fingers together and rested his elbows on his desk. He didn't say much, but his posture was enough to explain the anger the man was feeling. Despite this, Naruto continued his explanation without skipping a beat. This criminal group has connections all over Vale and Mistral, leaving Neo with no one to keep her safe except for a place where this group's power cannot reach. So you wish to have Neo take refuge within Beacon? Ashbin asked in a monotone voice, while Naruto nodded. Yes, it's not a long-term solution, but I know my team can protect her until we find a permanent way to keep Neo safe. Ashbin closed his eyes, as his mind was already made up. Yet, he still wanted to hear something. Amber, what is your opinion on the matter? Her situation might not be exactly like mine, but you should know it's close enough for me to make my choice on the matter. Nodding his head, Ashbin opened his eyes with a small frown. Well, I don't need any convincing, as you're training to be defenders on the people. So what better preparation could I give than allowing you to protect someone in need? Beaming with relief and excitement, Naruto lowered his head in gratitude, an action that Neo just so happened to copy. Thank you, Professor. I can see why my old man speaks so highly of you. Oh, so James does have nice things to say about me. I'll have to hold that information over his head at another time. However, there is no need to thank me, but instead I want you to dedicate yourself to this. I'm officially making this a mission exclusively for Team NGRA to protect Neo and find a permanent solution to keep her safe. Standing tall and striking the same military salute his father had drilled into him, Naruto displayed his absolute confidence. As team leader, I will accept this mission and promise nothing less besides overwhelming success. Ashbin merely smiled and nodded his head. Of course, if you need any help, I will assist where I can. However, I would like to use this as a way to see what you and your team are capable of. Amber lifted her brow at this, while Naruto grinned wide. I'll give it my all, but I think I should get Neo back to our dorm. I'm sure the rest of my team has found some more comfortable clothes for her by now. My office is always open if you need anything. Naruto nodded and turned towards the exit with Neo, but Amber merely stood still. You two go on without me. I'm going to talk to Ashpin alone for a moment. All right, sounds good to me. I'll see you back at the dorm later then. Watching both Naruto and Neo leave the office, Amber quickly shifted her attention to the headmaster of the school, her eyes holding a small glimpse of skepticism, while Ashpin merely kept a neutral expression. And what can I help you with, Amber? Make me understand what is going on here, Ashbin. Amber began in a stern voice, while she crossed her arms. I can understand why you're helping Neo. Sure, she isn't a maiden like in my case, but she needs help and you're an empathetic man. However, you and I both know leaving my team strictly on protecting Neo and resolving this situation is messy at best. I see, you want to know why I don't just assign Neo to an actual huntsman? Putting it simply. Yes. Ashbin sighed and adjusted his posture. I've been debating on pulling your team into my inner circle. However, before I tell them about Salem, Maidens, and the Relics, I wanted to give a test to gauge if they are ready for such a massive step. My plan was to wait until your second or third year, but it would seem fate had much different plans. So, that's your angle. Amber replied in a slightly annoyed voice. You disagree with my decision? Yes and no. Oh. Care to explain? Amber merely sighed. I've grown to respect Naruto as an individual and leader. He's someone who I feel should be brought into your circle. However, considering who his father is, that shouldn't be a surprise. Gretchen and Roman, on the other hand, are two that I don't hold in such high regards. Gretchen is a little naive and reckless for my liking. Roman, on the other hand, is a self-centered ass. So you feel only Naruto should be considered and not the other two. That's how I feel at the moment, but I also don't appreciate how you're using my team and Neo as a test. You're essentially allowing everyone involved to take unnecessary risks, just so you can secretly judge my team. With all due respect, Amber, your team is aware of the stakes at hand. I'm not hiding anything that could pose any danger to anyone involved. Amber merely shook her head and began to walk off. Well, you sound confident. Let's just hope that confidence doesn't come back to bite you in the ass. Amber then stopped right at the exit of the man's office, turning around to give Ashpin one piercing gaze. Remember, not all of us get to come back from the dead. Two weeks later, with Naruto, sighing to himself and leaning against a glass door, 
Naruto peered outside and watched the hard rain pour against beacons surrounding campus. A bleak and dreary sight that made him slump his shoulders. Well, this sucks. The blonde mumbled softly, while his eyes drifted to the small child by his side. It's just rain. It won't hurt us. Naruto smirked at Neo's optimism, as the girl seemed to develop a small sense for it ever since Team NGRA had found her. True, but I would like to avoid getting soaked. Well, we could wait out the storm. That's a solid idea, but we have to meet the others at the library for a team meeting. Neo nodded and turned towards the exterior with a slight frown. Then we better hurry and meet the others. Yeah, we don't want to hear Roman complaining about us being late. Naruto snickered, while Neo silently mimicked the older boy's amused face. However, as the two shared their moment of enjoyment at Roman's expense, a voice suddenly spoke up. Now are you talking about little me? Behind my back, I'm hit. Turning in surprise, Naruto and Neo both found Roman walking right in their direction. This, of course, caused Naruto to narrow his eyes in annoyance, while Neo stayed perky and upbeat. Isn't your class on the other side of the school grounds? Naruto asked. Why, yes it is. Then why are you here? Shouldn't you be heading to the library? Roman rolled his eyes and walked over to a small container that students would use to store their umbrellas while in class. I skipped class and was doing some. Roman paused and thought over his words, while his hands sorted through the umbrellas. Opportunity searching. Folding his arms with disapproval, Naruto kept a rather sour face. Considering as of late Roman has been avoiding his school and team duties, which didn't set well with Naruto, who was raised to follow the rules and always give everything he had into what he did. Do I even want to know what that means? Pulling out an umbrella and smirking, Roman looked towards Naruto. Probably not, but why are you and Neo just standing around? Don't tell me the Ice King is afraid of the magical falling water in the sky. Roman then bent over the umbrella within his hands and spoke in a slow and sarcastic voice. It's called rain, and I promise you won't melt. You're not amber after all. Just because I'm from Atlas doesn't mean I've never seen rain. Naruto replied in a rather annoyed voice. I was just deciding what to do since I don't have an umbrella like you. Walking by Naruto and laughing, Roman opened the door and extended the umbrella in his hands. Oh, this isn't mine. The young thief revealed before walking into the rain without a single care. Now... Yes. Promise me you'll never turn out like Roman. I promise. Naruto smiled and ruffled the girl's hair. Good, but I don't think the rain is gonna let up and we gotta get going. Should we run? Slowly removing the jacket that was a part of his beacon uniform, Naruto held a piece of clothing over Neo. Then by bending down, he lifted the tiny girl into his arms with a smile. I'll run, you just stay dry. Naruto replied before he dashed out into the pouring rain at his fastest speeds. Then as Naruto ran across the open grounds of Beacon, his legs kicked up puddles of water, while his body was quickly covered from the massive downpour from above. Yet as Naruto ran, he was forced to swerve and spin around the countless students, who were just walking under the safety of their umbrellas. However, catching the sight of Roman walking in the distance, Naruto's eyes got a small trickster's gleam when he saw his teammate walking parallel to a massive puddle. Heads up, Roman! Naruto yelled loudly, while jumping to the teen's side and right into the puddle causing a massive wave of water to expel out and cover Roman from head to toe. You bastard. Roman roared in anger while he watched the snickering blonde run off towards the library. Running until he came to the entrance of Beacon's library, Naruto quickly moved inside and finally lowered Neo onto dry ground. Then with a smile, he bent on one knee and removed his soaked jacket from her tiny body. Did you stay dry? Naruto asked with a wide grin while Neo smiled back. For the most part. Good. Let's go find the others then. Neo nodded and followed Naruto deeper into the library, while her mismatched eyes fixed onto the older boy, who was currently doing his best to try and dry himself off by twisting some of the water out of his clothes. You know, one day I'll make an umbrella that I can use to always keep you safe and dry. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll look forward to seeing that then. Neo beamed with happiness, while she and Naruto arrived at a small table, where Amber and Gretchen were both waiting for them. Hey there, leader, you're looking a little wet. Amber pointed out with a snicker, while said blonde and Neo both found seats at the table. That's an understatement. Gretchen bellowed out with a loud laugh, followed by a few shushing sounds directed her way. Well, you should see Roman. Naruto replied with a large grin, while turning to look over his shoulder, where a rather soaked and angry Roman was slowly stalking to the group. And speak of the devil. Amber laughed and watched Roman glare at Naruto as he found a seat with the group. And what happened to you? Our man-child of a leader. The young thief explained which made Naruto hold his hands up. Guilty as charged. Rolling his eyes, Roman merely folded his arms over his soaked clothes. Whatever, let's just cut to the chase. What exactly do you want to talk about? Yeah, I'm a little curious as well, Naruto. Gretchen admitted as she leaned closer into the table. 
Calling a group meeting like this isn't common for you. Naruto nodded. I was thinking that we should touch base about our plans moving forward. Amber lifted her brow with slight interest. Okay, and what exactly are you getting at? Glancing down to Neo, Naruto smiled and rested his elbow on her head, an action that made her pair of mismatched eyes look up to him with admiration. In the last two weeks, we have not figured out why Neo was a target, nor do we have a permanent solution for her going forward. However, within one week's time, the Vital Festival will be in full swing, and teams from the Four Kingdoms will have a chance to compete in the tournament. Yes, yeah, so... Roman asked in a rather hurried and annoyed tone. Naruto sighed. I was thinking of having our team withdraw from the tournament. It will be careless for us to complete when we should be focused on Neo's safety. Especially with how chaotic Beacon will become with representatives from another academy's present. Not to mention all the vendors and spectators that will be wandering around the area. Would make it easy for a lone child to get abducted without a scene being made. Amber pointed out, which made Naruto nod. Exactly why I want us to dedicate our time strictly onto Neo. Does anyone have an issue with this? Amber shrugged her shoulders. I could care less about the tournament. I'm more concerned about Neo. Gretchen nodded. I'm with Amber. Sure, the tournament would be fun, but Neo comes first. And what about you, Roman? Said teenager huffed and looked to the side. I wasn't looking forward to the tournament in the slightest. So this is the best case scenario for me. Well, I'm glad we are in agreement, but now moving on. Has anyone found anything about the people who are after Neo? Amber, Gretchen, and even Naruto turned their eyes to Roman, who got a rather annoyed look and held his hands up. What? Naruto chuckled. Well, how to say this nicely? Out of us four, you're the crook here. Amber cut in with a sharp and brutal tone. So if anyone has heard anything about a bunch of thugs chasing a small girl, it would be you. Oh, to hell with you all. Roman quickly replied before standing to his feet and pointing around the table. Why don't you go out and do some actual investigating instead of insulting me? Naruto sighed and tried to motion for Roman to retake his seat. We all have been trying our hardest to help Neo and get to the bottom of this, but me and Gretchen are both outsiders when it comes to Vale and don't know the first place to start. Meanwhile, between you and Amber, it's clear who has the most, um, uh, street smarts. Besides, you've also been the most absent of us for these last couple weeks. Amber cut in once more, while her voice held the same amount of venom as before. So if you're going to keep disappearing off to the gods, know where at least handle your fragile pride a little better and try to scavenge up some leads. Roman snarled as he locked eyes with Amber. I'm starting to get real sick of you. Just starting. Funny, I've been sick of you for months. Amber shot back, while Naruto, Neo, and Gretchen just helplessly watched the duo fight. Me, Naruto, and Gretchen have all been taking time to watch over Neo, while trying to figure out a solution to her situation. Meanwhile, you've been completely absent from helping us and I'm done with it. You know what, Amber? Screw you. Naruto's eyes grew wide and he quickly clamped his hands onto Neo's ears. All right, you two, I think that's quite enough. Standing her feet and slamming her hands onto the table, Amber glared daggers into Roman's eyes. Is that the best you can say? You act like you're some smooth and cunning rouge, but you're really just a selfish and unreliable piece of trash. You don't know the first thing about me or what I've had to do, but keep preaching about how you're so much better, you self-righteous bitch. Both of you stop. Save your breath, Ironwood. Roman snapped as he turned his back. I'm out of here. Big surprise, he's flaking on us again. Amber huffed before taking her seat once more. Naruto sighed and released his hold on Neo's ears. You know, that little confrontation was uncalled for. I disagree. If you won't call him out for his behavior, I will. Regardless of who is in the right and who is in the wrong. Did you guys think Roman's fuse was a little short today? I mean, he's never got this upset before, and it all happened so quickly. Looking to Gretchen, Amber merely shrugged her shoulders. I honestly tried to avoid any attempt to figure that jerk out. No, Gretchen's right. Roman has been acting strange for a while now and this only added more questions. Well, I don't care to find any answers. Amber replied, while a small silence filled the table. The group fell silent for a moment, while Naruto's eyes drifted to the windows of the library. Well, on a positive note, it looks like the rain has stopped. Gretchen grinned and stood to her feet. That's perfect timing for me. Oh, how so? Amber asked, while the taller girl folded her arms with an eye smile. My twin brother is stopping by to visit. I told him we would go see all the stalls and vendors for the festival. Naruto nodded with a soft grin. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm glad you'll get to spend time with your brother. Me too, but why don't your guys join me? I would love Hazel to meet my friends. Naruto pondered over the invitation, as he was planning to train today, since he hasn't had many chances to do so in the last few weeks with Neo around. However, glancing at the small girl by his side, Naruto could see the shine her eyes got at the mention of the festival. Something that could be just what the girl needs to help lift her spirits during this difficult time in her life. 
Hmm, well, I wouldn't mind tagging along, but only if Neo will share some yummy festival food with me. I would love to. The small girl signed in a quick and excited manner. Naruto grinned at the girl's enthusiasm. Well, looks like me and Neo are game. What about you, Amber? Shrugging her shoulders, Amber merely stood to her feet. Why not? As long as Roman isn't around, I'm happy. Then it's settled. Gretchen boomed in a loud voice as she ignored the warnings from the others around her to keep her voice down. Let's get going. Walking together as a group, the three-fourths of Team NGRA, along with Neo, made their way out of the library and across Beacon's campus. Eventually coming upon an open fairground that various vendors had already set up in preparation for the vital festival. Naruto himself was mildly impressed, as it was almost the same scale as some of the festivals back in Atlas, which was impressive considering the actual festival wouldn't start for a whole week. However, out of the group, Neo and Gretchen were by far the most amazed, since neither has ever experienced or seen a festival like the one before them. Whoa, well, I didn't expect this much. The large woman exclaimed with wonder, which made Naruto and even Amber grin. It's amazing. Taking a large sniff and closing her eyes, Neo suddenly seemed rather excited as well. Something smells delicious. Well, we have plenty of time to try everything, Naruto declared before scooping the small girl up onto his shoulders. So, just let your nose lead the way, and I'll take us there. Well, before you two go running off, let's go find my brother, Gretchen proposed while looking at her scroll. He should be waiting over this way. Well, we will follow you then, Naruto replied as he carried Neo, and Amber tagged along from behind, maneuvering through the rather impressive and alluring stalls throughout the area. Gretchen quickly led everyone through a sea of people and eventually came to a small secluded space where a single person was waiting. A person with olive tan skin and a rather impressive muscular build, while towering with a height that matched Gretchen's own, easily making Naruto and Amber think a similar thought with a nervous expression. Yup, they are definitely twins. Hazel. Gretchen began with a large grin, while quickly wrapping her arms around a large male. If it isn't my favorite little Ron, laughing and returning his sister's embrace, Hazel shook his head. You know, just because you're a few minutes older doesn't mean you can call me a runt. I can and I will. Gretchen laughed while backing away and holding her hands to her team and Neo. But let me introduce you to my friends. Walking up to the massive man with Neo on his shoulders, Naruto held a hand out and gave Hazel a friendly smile. It's nice to meet you. Gretchen's told us a lot about you. I'm Naruto Ironwood and this is Neo. Accepting Naruto's hand with a rather powerful grip, Hazel returned the blonde smile with one of his own. You're the team leader from Atlas, right? That's me. Well, I hope you're looking after my sis. She's the only family I've got. Naruto grinned. We look after each other, but don't worry about her. Gretchen's tough and I'll always have her back. I'll hold you to that. Hazel bellowed with a loud laugh, showing more similarities in the twins' behavior. Well, I guess I should introduce myself. Amber began as she walked by Naruto's side and held her hand out. I'm Amber, plain and simple. Hazel took the girl's hand and nodded. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Gretchen was grinning from ear to ear and looking directly at her brother. Well, since the introductions are out of the way, why don't we go have some fun? Sounds good to me. Naruto laughed loudly as he took off with Neo. Let's go get some grub, Neo. I want it all. Watching Naruto and Neo scurry off, Amber merely shook her head and followed the two. Oh, I swear those two get along almost too well. Come on, well. Gretchen boomed as she slapped her brother's arm. Let's not just stand around. Nodding with a soft smile, Hazel followed after his sister and her team to enjoy the day together. Later that night, laying in his bed with his eyes opened, Naruto slowly looked out the corner of his eyes. Noticing Amber was neatly tucked under her blanket sound asleep, while Gretchen was completely sprawled out on her own bed snoring louder than anything he had heard before. Though shifting his eyes to a small makeshift bed within their dorm, Naruto smiled as he saw Neo was having a rather peaceful sleep. Yet as his eyes wandered even farther within the room, he saw Roman's bed, which was both made and empty. This made Naruto frown, as ever since Roman and Amber had their big blowout, the teen had been completely missing. Naruto himself wondered if this outcome was in some way his fault as a leader. Maybe he could have held Roman more accountable, or perhaps he could have been better at keeping Amber and Roman under control. Yet as these questions and doubts swirled in Naruto's head, he began to think more and more about his capabilities as a leader. This wasn't the first time Naruto asked himself if he had what it took to be a leader. However, as time went on and more hardships came along, his self-doubt only grew stronger. What should I do? Naruto thought to himself. Our team hasn't been the most tightly organized, but with Neo around, we need to get our shit together. Naruto signed to himself and rolling onto his side faced the window of his dorm. I have all these responsibilities that I didn't want, but I can't run from them. I came to Beacon to find my own way, but all I'm doing is running around in circles. 
I don't know how to be a leader to my team, and I don't know how to help Neo. Part of me wishes I just stayed in Atlas and kept on the path I was already on. At least that way, I wouldn't be this confused and lost. Or even if I stumbled, I would have winter around to keep me grounded. Pressing his hands against his head, Naruto gave himself an ample amount of pressure. No, I can't keep thinking negative like this. I just need to keep pushing myself forward and learn from my mistakes. I may not be cut out to be a leader or want this position, but damn it, I'll be the best I can. I'll find Roman and fix this team, and we will figure out a way to save Neo together. Pleased with his self-motivation, Naruto was about to finally close his eyes and try to fall asleep. However, a shadow catching his eye from outside his window. Naruto instantly froze his body and focused his vision onto the object that was clearly stopped at his window. Observing a silhouette of what appeared to be either a man or woman, who was balancing on a tree branch right outside of their window. Then to Naruto's surprise, the figure went directly to Naruto's window and slowly began to lift the glass up without any resistance. The window is unlocked, Naruto thought, while feeling like he was in some sort of dream as his current situation felt too strange to be real. However, as a figure slithered their way into Team NGRA's dorm, Naruto pressed his nails into his fists, knowing from the pain that shot into his hands that this was very real. Yet as the unknown individual moved across the room, Naruto at first wondered if the person he was seeing was Roman, though it would be odd for the boy to take such an action. Still, Naruto didn't know who else the individual could be, but as the person loomed over Neo, Naruto watched in shock as they lifted their arm into the air, allowing the moonlight to reflect against the shining silver dagger in their hand. Naruto, reacting without even thinking, blitzed the intruder faster than the sound of his movements could reach the ears of the intruder. Then what followed next was Naruto grabbing the individual's wrist and head, snapping their wrist bone before Naruto twisted his torso and slammed the intruder face first into the floor, cracking the wood beneath them and causing splinters to fly up into the air. Amber, Gretchen, get up. Naruto yelled loudly, which caused the girls to stir awake. Flipping a light on, Amber's eyes grew wide when she saw Naruto pinning a strange man into the floor. So reacting quickly, the girl pulled a collapsible staff out from her pillow and pointed it at the man, who seemed completely unconscious. Yet, as she saw the dagger on the floor, her mind began to connect the dots. Is Neo okay? Nodding his head and not giving up on the pressure he was applying onto the man despite his unconscious state, Naruto jerked his head to the window. He came in through the window. Check and make sure anyone else isn't around. Running to the open window, Amber peered outside and looked out into the darkness of Beacon's campus. I don't see anything, and Gretchen, will you wake up? Softly groaning, the large woman lifted herself up. But as her eyes adjusted to the situation, she was left stunned. What's going on here? Naruto shook his head. Somebody tried to attack Neo. Come here and keep them held down. Naruto then turned to Neo, who was slowly shifting herself awake. I'm going to get Neo out of here before she sees this. Gretchen jumped out of her bed and quickly slammed her knee into the man's back using her overwhelming strength to make sure he couldn't move in the slightest. Hey, I'll call Ashpin and get the situation taken care of. Amber began as she grabbed her scroll and began to look for the man's contact info. His office is a safe place. Me and Gretchen can meet you there after we take care of this bastard. Scooping Neo into his arms, Naruto gave his teammate a strange look. Isn't his office locked? Waving the blonde off, Amber brought the scroll to her ear. It's a key code lock. Just type 7491 and you're in. Naruto was curious as to how Amber knew this, but was aware that now wasn't the time for questions like that. All right, I'll see you too in Ashbin's office. Amber simply nodded, while Naruto dashed out of the room with Neo in his arms. Then as Amber finally got connected to Ashbin, her eyes hardened on the unconscious assassin in her dorm. Ashbin, we have a problem. Ashbin's office. Amber wasn't mad, she was furious, but anyone within the room could tell that, considering the girl was currently giving Ashbin a death glare. Gretchen, on the other hand, was by Amber's side and seemed exhausted from her lack of sleep. Yet the girl's body language was clear enough to read and easily displayed how shaken tonight's events had left her. Naruto, unlike his team, wasn't standing before Ashbin, but rather off to the side of the room on a small couch, while Neo laid sound asleep with her head over the blonde's leg. If anyone had a right to be affected by tonight's events, it would be her, as someone had tried to take her life. Though fate seemed to be on Naruto's side as he had managed to save Neo from her attacker with no serious harm befalling her. Yet despite this many questions still lingered through the air. The largest of course being how did Neo's attacker know exactly where to find her? This is bullshit Ashbin. Amber began in a soft voice. She didn't want to wake Neo. However, as she walked forward and pressed her knuckles into the man's desk, it was a wonder she didn't yell. Someone was able to get close enough to Neo and almost kill her. Shouldn't your school be safe? Ashbin merely nodded with an exhausted sigh. In all my years as headmaster, this is the first incident from an outside source. 
Normally people avoid a school filled with trained warriors, but would seem tonight's invader was an exception. That's all you have to say. He was an exception. Unfortunately, yes, Beacon is very lax on security, but this is a lesson we can learn from to improve. Amber turned around and threw her hands into the air, while Gretchen slowly inched forward. Um, Professor, what exactly is going to happen to the assassin Naruto caught? Looking at Gretchen, Ashpin clicked a small monitor. Beacon doesn't have the facilities to keep a prisoner, so our intruder has been taken by the Vale authorities. He's currently in transport to their headquarters, where he will be detained and interrogated. Well, that's good, I guess. Maybe we can finally get some leads about why these people are after Neo. Ashpin nodded. Yes, hopefully your team can use any information to finish this mission with overwhelming success. Naruto for a second couldn't believe his ears. Ashpin still wanted his team to have full responsibility over Neo. If anything, Naruto felt the situation was growing to the point where an actual licensed huntsman should take over. Yet Naruto didn't voice his growing concern, as instead he looked down to the sleeping form of Neo. A sight that made Naruto think just how much he wanted to see this through, so the girl could be safe. Is that all you have to say, Ashpin? Amber began, which made Naruto look back at his teammate. These people somehow figured out we were keeping Neo at Beacon. They knew where we friggin' lived, how this assassin slid in through our unlocked window. Some of this should be expected. Neo is an abnormality within Beacon. Plenty of your fellow students see you with a girl without explanation. Ashpin began as he held a hand out to Neo with a frown. People will gossip Amber and gossip lead somewhere. In your case, it leads to the people hunting Neo to learn where she is. Amber gritted her teeth, but before she could speak, Naruto finally voiced himself. If these people know where Neo is, we need to start shuffling her around Beacon better. I'm talking about avoiding our normal paths and schedules, while even sleeping outside of our dorm. We need to approach the situation as if every bit of our intel has been given to our enemies. So we hide, then what? Naruto frowned at Amber's question as he could recognize the frustration in her voice. I don't know. This is just great. An assassin sneaks into our dorm and almost kills Neo. Meanwhile, Roman is missing like usual, and you don't know what to do. Gretchen stepped forward and took a stance between Amber and Naruto. Please, we are all stressed and exhausted. Let's not turn on each other. We are all in this together. Ashpin nodded with a calculated gaze. Gretchen is correct. My advice is to regroup and get some rest. Stay here for the night to be safe, but don't implode on each other. If you're to keep Neo safe and figure out why she is being targeted, then you must work with one another. Amber sighed and walked over to a chair. I know that. The girl began in a more calm tone as she took a seat and massaged her face with her hands. This whole situation just has me on edge and I'm sorry. Gretchen tried her best to give her teammate a confident grin. Hey, I feel the same way, but we just gotta keep giving our best and work together. Amber merely nodded, but Naruto lowered his head so no one could see the rather displeased expression on his face. He knew all this talk was meaningless if they didn't have the experience, or at least a plan to sort this situation out. Yet, he still wouldn't voice his opinion on the matter. Instead, he kept trying to think over and over what his father would do. However, with every thought that crossed his mind, Naruto knew he wasn't his father, and he didn't know what to do as a leader. All Naruto knew was that the lives of Neo and his team were in danger from a powerful gang. Tonight they had got lucky and no one had gotten hurt, but how long would that luck stay? How long until someone within Team NGRA or Neo gets seriously hurt or killed? Naruto didn't even want to think of that possibility, but it was the only thoughts that ran through his mind. Can I do this? Naruto asked himself in thought, while he looked down to his shaking hands, showing how the pressure of the situation was slowly eating the teen away. Yet as Naruto had his inner turmoil, a small finger poked him on the nose. An action that made Naruto glance down at Neo, who was smiling softly into his eyes. You're always saving me. I promise I'll start protecting you too. Naruto smiled at the girl's declaration. It was sweet and thoughtful. However, most importantly, it helped clear some of the growing doubts filling his head. So ruffling Neo's hair, Naruto simply signed back. You do enough already. Just worry about getting some sleep. Nodding her head and snuggling into her favorite blonde, Neo closed her mismatched eyes and tried to fall back asleep. Though while Naruto and Neo share their small moment, Ashpin answered a call on his personal scroll. This, of course, caused the teenagers to see a rather displeased look flash across the man's face. Then to make matters worse, as he ended the call, he simply lowered the device against his desk and took a long-winded sigh. Ashpin, what was that about? Amber began, while Naruto and Gretchen both watched the man run a hand through his hair. The man who attacked your dorm was found dead in his temporary cell moments ago. There is a current investigation on how this could happen so quickly, but so far no evidence has been found. Gretchen was in pure disbelief and slightly stumbled back. Roman mentioned Lil Miss Malachite's gang had a strong hold in Vale, but this is ridiculous. Amber gritted her teeth. 
And now we are back to square one with an even bigger target on our backs. Naruto himself couldn't believe what he was hearing, as now things were getting far too serious for a bunch of academy students. However, Ashpin was in a much different mindset. Yes, this is quite the sour development, but I have faith that your team can turn this situation around. You've thwarted this gang twice now, and I'm sure they won't survive a third encounter with you. Naruto looked over to Ashpin with disbelief, as the man still had full intentions of having them oversee the situation. Despite the fact that they were unqualified children way and over their heads with a group that clearly wasn't afraid to kill, even if the target was one of their own. Unfortunately, as Amber and Gretchen didn't show any problems with continuing this mission, Naruto for a third time tonight held his tongue and didn't say a word. Instead, he just placed a protective hand over Neo and sat in silence. The next day, walking through Beacon's courtyard with a sour face, Naruto had his hands in his pockets while his thoughts were consumed by the events that had recently transpired. Frustrated to his core that someone was able to get close to Neo, while also on edge with his lack of progress in fixing the situation. The course didn't help that Roman was still MIA, and the rest of his team wasn't making any progress either. Am I over my head here? Naruto mumbled to himself, while he suddenly felt his scroll vibrate. So pulling the device from his pocket, Naruto saw his father was calling him. Deciding this was a welcome distraction from his current troubles, Naruto quickly answered the call and brought the scroll to his ear. Status report, soldier. James began, while his voice held a rather light-hearted tone that made Naruto smile. Alive and healthy, sir. Any orders from high command? Naruto asked with a small laugh. Just one. Order away, general. A chuckle coming closer than expected, Naruto looked over his shoulders to find his father standing right before him with scroll up to his ear. Come give your old man a hug. Pocketing his scroll and walking forward, Naruto met James halfway and gave the man a strong hug. This, of course, caused Naruto to feel the added pressure of his metal replacement arm. It's good to see you, but I didn't know you were coming in today. Backing away with a large smirk, James lightly tapped his son's shoulder with a mock punch. Well, the vital festival is only a week away. Plus, I wanted to surprise you. Naruto nodded. Well, you succeeded on that front. Good to hear, but I'm excited to see the team of the great Naruto Ironwood. So when can I meet your new friends? Scratching his head and looking to the side, Naruto gave his father a nervous laugh. Well, Ashpin has my team working a rather delicate situation at the moment. So my team is rather separated at the moment. I see. Anything you need help with? Naruto sighed and rubbed the back of his head. Maybe. I don't know. Ashpin placed me in charge of a rather serious situation, and I don't know if I have what it takes to see this through. Especially with how tense things have gotten recently. Well, Ashpin has shared some information with me already. James revealed much to Naruto's surprise. But since they were fellow headmasters, he should have seen that coming. So, you know about Neo? James nodded. I know the basics, but nothing recent. However, you seem troubled. So, what's happened? An assassin tried to kill Neo last night. Naruto began in a rather low and frustrated tone. Me and my team managed to capture the man. But once we handed him over to the Vale authorities, he was killed before anyone could learn anything. Naruto, this sounds like the situation is getting out of hand. Especially for a couple of academy students. Gritting his teeth and closing his eyes, Naruto lowered his head. I know that and I don't know what to do anymore. Ashpen expects us to figure this situation out, but I don't know how. Someone was able to find Neo, and all my team can do is shuffle around the campus with her and try to keep people guessing where she is. I mean, right now she is with Amber, but keeping her safe isn't fixing the main issue. I'm just not ready for something like this, Dad. I'm not a leader, and I can't keep pretending like I am one. Resting a hand on his son's messy blonde locks, James merely ruffled the teen's hair. I would disagree. From my perspective, you understand your shortcomings and are able to admit you need help. This shows you have grown and matured over these last few months. Now you just need someone to help you fix your flaws. Can you help me, Dad? Smiling wide, James nodded. Of course I will. It's my job after all. Thank you. Well, I have to meet with Ashpin for the upcoming festival. So I'll try to figure out a solution to your current situation when I speak with him. I appreciate that, Dad. And if I can do anything to help, let me know. Naruto replied softly. Looking over his shoulder, James noticed a group approaching his location. Actually, while I'm meeting with Ashpin, you can show my students to their temporary dorms. I can do that, Dad. Smiling wide, James waved the rather large group of students over to his location. Then as the crowd maneuvered into a neat cluster and waited for instruction, James cleared his throat. I'll be heading to meet with Beacon's headmaster. In the meantime, James took a slight pause and rested a proud hand on Naruto's shoulder. My son will show you around the academy grounds. It's a pleasure to be the first one to welcome you all to Beacon Academy. Naruto began in a friendly and welcoming voice, while his eyes surveyed the rather large crowd of Atlas students. Yet as Naruto's eyes spotted a rather standout mop of white hair, his body went stiff. 
For the first time in months, Naruto was now mere feet away from the girl who was not only his dearest friend, but also the individual who had captured his heart. Though as Naruto and Winter locked eyes with one another, the young blonde felt all his remaining confidence leave his body. Since the girl's normal cold and icy glare was enough to let Naruto know his life was about to get even more complicated. Well, James began with booming confidence while slapping Naruto's back. I'll be off. Watching his father walk off, Naruto slowly cleared his throat and tried his hardest to put a fake smile on. Then by turning to the group of Atlas students, Naruto tried his best to avoid Winter's gaze. Well, why don't you guys follow me? Your temporary dorms aren't too far away. Taking the lead, Naruto started to escort the group through the campus without turning or speaking to anyone. Yet it didn't take long for one of the students to call out to him. So you're the general's son, huh? I've heard a lot about you. Apparently, you graduated top in your class back in Atlas. Hearing an unfamiliar female voice, Naruto looked over his shoulder to find a rather muscular girl smiling at him. In a way, she kind of reminded Naruto of Gretchen, but her size still wasn't as large as his teammates. Uh, thanks, but you can just call me Naruto. The blonde replied in a small, awkward exchange, as even though these were Atlas students, Naruto didn't know a majority of them. The girl merely nodded and gave Naruto a giant smile. Oh, I'm Elm, by the way, Elma Dern. First year of Atlas Academy, Naruto gave a simple nod, while not giving much else of a response to the girl. Yet before Naruto could move his attention away, another voice spoke up. Hey, you're first year too, right? Will you be competing in the Vital Festival? Looking at the sheep faunus that had asked the question, Naruto watched Elm slap the girl's arm and laugh. Trying to size up the competition, already Fiona? The now named Fiona seemed a little embarrassed and held her hands up. No, I was just making conversation. It's fine, I don't mind the question, but no, I won't be participating in the Vital Festival. Naruto explained, while several surprised looks were directly placed upon him. Wait, why not? You're the general's son. You gotta be good enough to be in the tournament. Elm pointed out, which made Naruto frown. Actually, my team has been given a mission from our headmaster, Professor Ajpin. So we will be too busy for the Vital Festival. Naruto explained in a simple tone, while stopping before a rather large building. But here is where you will be staying. Wow, getting missions already? Your team must be something else. Fiona praised, as she ignored her temporary dorm and was still stuck on what Naruto had revealed about his mission. A response that made Elm laugh with a booming laughter. Please, he's the general's son. What else do you expect from him? He's just like his old man. Naruto didn't show it, but that comment really struck a nerve with him. Considering ever since he was little, everyone had always compared him to his father or expected a certain level of success from him. However, there was a short list of people who judged him as his own person using his own merits and accomplishments. The person who was always at the top of said list was funny enough, the person who had just snorted at Elm's words. Please. Winter began in a nice cold voice, while she walked forward and stood right before Naruto with her arms crossed. The general is a great and calculated man, but this imbecile is a thick-headed moron who is nothing like his father. He's not some great genius or second coming of General Ironwood, he's Naruto Ironwood. An annoying idiot and coward, Every single Atlas student looked at Winter with a look of disbelief, as they couldn't believe the girl had outright insulted Naruto like that. Yet Naruto wasn't hurt or even offended. Instead, he looked to the girl he loved with a small smile. Her words may have been harsh, but like always, she was the only one who saw him for who he was and nothing else. Still the same frigid and ruthless Ice Queen, huh? Naruto replied with a small laugh, which caused even more surprise among the Atlas students. Glad to see some things don't change. Winter held her ground and glared at Naruto. It would seem unfortunately so, as I would hope your time in Beacon would make you less of an idiot. However, you seem to be the same imbecile as before. Not giving a reply, Naruto simply walked forward and stood to where he was towering over Winter. Then as their bodies were mere inches from touching, Naruto looked down upon Winter with a cocky smirk, while Winter kept looking up with her trademark glare. Then as the two had a small silent stare down, every onlooker watched with bated breath for what happened next. However, not a single person, especially Winter, was prepared for what Naruto would do next, which was wrap his arms tightly around her slender frame. Then by using his superior strength, Naruto pulled Winter into a tight embrace, resulting in the blushing girl having her face tightly pressed into the firm chest of her best friend. I've missed you so much, Naruto whispered softly into Winter's ear, which sent chills down the girl's spine, who instead of retaliating or pushing the blonde away, wrapped her arms around Naruto's waist and returned the hug. Of course you have imbecile, Winter replied in a stern voice which made Naruto laugh. Come on, Ice Queen, can you admit you miss me a little? Naruto asked, which in return made Winter squeeze ever so tighter. And give you the satisfaction of knowing how much I've missed you? I would never. 
Hearing Winter's words filled Naruto with a sensation of happiness that he had been missing for a long time. They still had a long way to go and still had several things to work through, but Naruto could only smile at the small steps they were both taking. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter info in description. Credits go to the story's author with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.